We're going to aim to get started right at the top of the hour, so um, not too much of a window here. The early audience, let's just do a little sound check. If someone could chime in on the Q&A and make sure you can hear me and don't get too far into things. We're still getting set up. We're still letting a couple people log in. Uh, let's do a sound check. Can can uh, someone comment on the uh, Q and A message board? Just let me know. You can hear me. I think you can. All right. Good. Yeah, this is a live presentation, so let me, uh, we're about ready to go, just one second. Okay, so, you know, this is a very exciting presentation to introduce the NV Inverter. It's a new product that's now available on the Fortress product line. Uh, before we dive in, you know, know that we are recording this program and you can find it and other updates in our training portal. Uh, so it's possible to get recordings and slide access to this program in our training portal. So while you're listening, you know, go ahead and go over to fortresspower.com, click on the training portal and join our certified dealer program. So don't worry, it's free. You know, you can join even if you're an interested homeowner, uh, you know, to get access to slides and recordings. Um, so this webinar is part of our certified dealer training program. And it's a great way to prepare for job sites and to stay informed of any kind of new uh, training content we produce. So if you complete the program 100% and then we upload new content, the next time you'll log in and you'll see less than 100% and see the new content to take. So it's a good way to uh, just stay on top of Fortress training resources. Uh, as far as our agenda, we are going to cover the features of our new NV inverter technical specifications, have a look at our monitoring portal that comes with this. Uh, so, you know, if you're a first time uh, attendee of this program, uh, you may not know that Fortress is a lithium iron phosphate battery manufacturer. We have a very robust residential and commercial line, primarily focused on behind the meter applications. But Fortress has been selling lithium iron phosphate batteries to the U.S. residential market for longer than most others on the market, including Tesla and Simplify, or with the exception of Tesla and Simplify and Discover. So we have a lot of experience in the battery industry, including large whole home backup applications, both on and off the grid. So the 48 volt NV product line already joins a very robust residential uh, product line that has a lot of uh, field hours already logged. Uh, so Fortress has distribution throughout the United States. We have primary distribution warehouses, uh, on both coasts as well as Texas. So if your distributor is out of stock, we can typically restock within just a, 
a matter of a few days. Um, our Puerto Rico audience, we have a special focus with an office and a quite a large support team uh, located uh, in San Juan and greater San Juan. And this also means the majority of our technical support team is bilingual. Uh, so our support team has a high number of engineers on staff. We do our spare parts management and advanced uh, support cases just outside our headquarters in Philadelphia. Uh, we also have a very fast growing uh, office presence in California where we have sales and engineering team members uh, to support both residential and commercial products. So let's take a look at Fortress's residential product line to see how the NV fits in. Uh, Fortress batteries are 48 volt and popped in compatible with pretty much any popular 48 volt battery inverter on the market with a rare exception. Uh, Solar Edge, for example, we're not compatible with and uh, certain inverters that have analog controls rather than digital controls may not have the right, you know, voltage programming capability. Uh, but our end users and installers, as well as regulatory authorities, have wanted the battery and the inverter to come from a single brand for a variety of reasons. Uh, the battery is the most expensive component of the entire system. So when you select the NV inverter, you're buying into a platform that is squarely focused on making premium battery products go alongside an inverter. Uh, so to be clear up front, you can't use the NV inverter with any other lithium battery brand and get warranty and support service from Fortress. This is a departure from our battery product line, which is inverter agnostic. Uh, but the upcoming international residential code cycle requires a UL 9540 revision 2 listing, which specifically mandates uh, battery inverter pairings. And it makes it too costly to be a product agnostic company and where jurisdictions are having inspectors dot their I's and cross their T's and look for this UL 95. 40 Rev 2 edition, which again is not mandated right now in most of the country, but will be, you know, in the next few years to come. We also believe that UL 9540 Rev 3 will revert to the original intention of 9540, which is that the batteries actually can be standalone 9540 ESS systems if they contain all the safety features necessary to pass the tests regardless of which inverter they're paired with. Uh, so this is why the E-Flex and the E-Vault Max already have UL 9540 listings because they can pass that test. It was redefined in the upcoming edition to also say you have to have a specific inverter pairing. Um, and so, you know, Fortress remains committed to supporting the inverter partners and the communication systems that we have in place. Uh, Fortress technical support is very good at diagnosing other inverter issues such as Solark and Schneider and SMA and Victron. Uh, but installers and end users both want simplicity when it comes to service and support. And the NV brings this all together under one rooftop you know, regarding warranty and technical support. And of course, if Fortress is going to make an inverter, you know, we want to make it to the same quality standards that we hold our batteries to. Uh, so the NV product series has three product models. Let me just check in real quick on, on Q&A, make sure I'm not having any issues. So sometimes I get a little ahead of myself but the messaging looks looks pretty good. So let me get this back, get back on track here. So the NV is actually a product series. There's uh, three different product models in this series. Uh, we'll start the presentation with the 8K and 10K models. 
Uh, but we're going to spend most of our time on the 12K model because the 12K really is the shining star of this product line, uh, which we think that most US-based customers are going to want to install due to its 200 amp internal grid pass-through, uh, allowing you to go from the grid through the inverter to a 200 amp service panel. Uh, so the NV product series will work with solar only when grid tied, you know, without a battery. Uh, it'll also work in battery only mode. Uh, Fortress will also warranty lead acid batteries. So if you're not quite yet ready for lithium batteries, uh, you can go with lead acid and then consider lithium, you know, a few years down the road, 48 volt will still be here uh, when it comes time to replace those lead acid battery banks. So it's suitable for grid-tied application on and off the grid in indoor and outdoor settings. Uh, the, U, the inverters are UL1741 listed, including, and we need to update this slide, but including uh, UL1741SB. Um, and they're warranty for off-grid application. So these are high-frequency transformerless inverters uh, with high energy efficiency. Uh, the NV 8K targets a lower price point uh, customer. And part of that is the warranty. The standard warranty on the NV 8K is a five year warranty. And so it kind of comes in at, at the lowest possible price point uh, for our product line. The 10K and the 12K both have 10 year warranties right out of the box. Uh, so let's talk about unboxing the NV. You get a wall mount bracket. Uh, you get CT sensors. Uh, the inverter can be fully programmed without Wi-Fi access on the touchscreen. And it includes a unique debug feature that helps identify fault events and suggest resolutions to those events. Um, you know, for basic issues, it works very well. Uh, the Fortress Web, <laughs> the Fortress, Fortress has a web app for the Envy on the various app stores that's used for commissioning and monitoring the inverter. And the, the monitoring portal, which we'll get into later, uh, actually has uh, very good fleet management. Uh, the Envy also has uh, 12K, has the most jurisdictional uh, listings. So the 12K is what is currently on the California Energy Commission inverter list. Uh, both inverters are listed for uh, HECO and Luma in Puerto Rico. Uh, the NV12K is what has the UL9540 Edition 2 uh, listing with the uh, rest of the Fortress product line. Uh, so if you are in Puerto Rico and you're sizing up the AK and 10K, just know that you do have all the certifications necessary uh, for that market. So all NV product models have a rapid shutdown transmitter built into them. Uh, the integrated rapid shutdown transmitter is an AP systems, AP smart transmitter pre-installed inside the unit. So the inverter has a rapid shutdown button, um, not currently built into the AK-10K, but it, it is in the next production run. Uh, the NV-12Ks have a rapid shutdown button built into them. Uh, so really all you need to do is provide the AP Smart rapid shutdown only devices. So uh, we went with AP Smart because they have a large user base already and also because they have a rapid shutdown only product uh, in their product line, and that's the lowest cost and, and least complicated way to do rapid shutdown compliance on a rooftop. Uh, DC optimizers and microinverters, you absolutely can do that with the NV product line, uh, but the NV inverters have multiple uh, MPPT. So they have the AK and 10K have two MPPT, the um, 12K has three MPPT, um, and each MPPT can accommodate its own shade profile as long as the circuit layouts are, are carefully 
uh, considered, it can do shade management. So for sites with extreme shade, you can still do Tygo or Intelligent for DC optimization uh, or do microinverters or you know any kind of system for AC coupling. So you can still bring your own rapid shutdown system and, and unwire the transmitter and land your own transmitter into the inverter. But for sites where you know the shade issues can be resolved through grouping modules together on a single MPPT input, uh, the, the combination of the Fortress NB and the AP system's rapid shutdown only product line represents the lowest cost and easiest installation that's rapid shutdown compliant. Uh, all the MPPTs have a 600 volt uh, design voltage which means you can have the same length of uh, 600 volt solar circuits uh, that are on traditional string inverters. Let me make sure real quick that yeah, we are recording this. I didn't want to get too, <laughs> too ahead of myself. Um, but, but at any rate, the, uh, the, M, the, the, Every MPPT has a maximum design voltage of 600 volts. So you can have the same links of solar circuits as are on traditional inverters. It's a good retrofit advantage for uh, existing solar arrays that predate in-phase or solar edge. You know, so if you have any older uh, SMA or Fronius uh, systems out there, you can get up on the roof, do a roof inspection, click on some rapid shutdown, uh, you know, only devices, and then yank the old inverter off the wall, put the Envy on the wall, and that's a pretty easy code compliant retrofit. The NV inverters are outdoor rated, so you can put them outside as you would expect with an IP65, you know, NEMA 3R inverter. Uh, but keep in mind, indoor locations are a better choice for the inverters to avoid, you know, direct exposure to sunlight and, you know, reduced dust and you know, more moderate temperatures. So, you know, if you can put the inverters inside, that's a good option. Um, you can put them outside, but avoid direct sunlight. Um, you know, avoid rain falling directly onto the inverter. Uh, like other transformerless inverters with active fan cooling, uh, the inverters do output some noise, especially when running at 50% load or greater. So garage locations really are perfect for inverters for the highest level of customer satisfaction. Uh, it, that noise, you know, might be heard on an outdoor porch in the garage. It's less important. Um, still, outdoor locations are suitable for the NV as long as you avoid direct sunlight, direct exposure to southern exposures uh, for our northern hemisphere user base, uh, as well as any snow or rain. Uh, that could come down from above. So let's spend very briefly some time looking over the 8K and the 10K spec before diving into the 12K model. Uh, the 8K and the 10K are all-in-one hybrid inverters, uh, which are intended to do backup load panels uh, with a main that's not backed up by the grid. So. Uh, you know, so here in our our one line diagram, um, you know what we what we what we see down in the bottom right is a, a backup load panel that's not the main panel. So these these NV AKs are intended for backing up like hundred amp services. You know, um, this is actually an older design format, and the inverters are stackable, so you can get larger systems out of them. But really, the intent of the 8K and the 10K product line is for these backup opportunities. We're only trying to back up a fridge, you know, some LED lights, you know, maybe a mini split. This is not going to be the vast majority of your sales or installations, uh, but it is a useful product to know about for small applications. So the, the 18KW can actually fit 13 kilowatts of solar. So you know, while eight kilowatts is a little bit on the small range, you can fit a, a decent amount of solar on there um, 
that has some various, you know, cost optimization advantages. There's two MPPT that are double sized. So you can fit a total of four solar circuits into this inverter by doubling up on the two MPPTs. Uh, so if those, if you have a roof surface that faces a different direction uh, from another, you can keep those on separate MPPTs. Uh, or if one section of the array is closer to the tree line than the other, you can put those on separate MPPTs. Uh, there's no difference in the generator size between the 8K and the 10K, but the 10K model can fit a little bit more PV onto it, and, and it comes with a 10-year warranty instead of a five-year warranty. Uh, so, so one item to note on all NV product series is, you know, what's here as the AC to loading grid plus DC to battery. Uh, that's the, the total PV processing capability uh, of the inverter. We're going to talk about this number in greater detail when we get to the NV12K, but for now, you know, take note that you know, this is a 12 kilowatt processing capability on what is a nameplate eight kilowatt inverter. Um, what happens is these inverters can can process more power continuously than just what their rated backup capability or grid connected capability is by sending some power to the AC side of the inverter and other power to the DC side of the inverter simultaneously. So the 8K and the 10K can also process more power than their rated backup capability. Um, you can choose which the AC or the DC side, which gets priority uh, for fine tuning that. Um, and so while the NVAK can only send eight kilowatts of power uh, to the load or grid side, so on the AC side, it can only send eight kilowatts. To the DC side, it can only send a maximum of eight kilowatts, but it can process a, a total amount of power at 12 kilowatts. So if you design the system right and you have the right application for it, you can put you know a 13 kilowatt solar array on an NV you know 8K inverter and not experience any clipping because you're actually processing 12 kilowatts of power, you know net metering back to the grid, you know powering the load and charging the battery at the same time. So the 10K model has a, a similar bonus. It can process 12 kilowatts. Uh, you know, that allows a much larger solar array to be tied into the system than is typical for a solar array this size. So, you know, the, the NV8K and 10K product series are great for, you know, solar arrays that are, you know, 15 kilowatts and down, so 12 kilowatt, 13 kilowatt, uh, provided that you don't need that UL9540 uh, Rev2 listing on the inverter. Uh, before we end this discussion, let's talk about the 12240 volt grid pass-through rating, uh, which is actually a market-leading grid pass-through on this 8K or 10K inverter uh, at, at 90 amps or 21 uh, kilowatts or a little over 21 kilowatts. Um, you know, what that before you get any ideas and you say, oh, it has a 90 amp grid pass through, I can use this to back up a 100 amp panel. It's worth taking a look inside the NV 8K 10K wiring box and looking at our interconnection accessories uh, before, you know, jumping to that conclusion. Uh, so unlike the NV12K, the NV8K and 10K does not have built-in breakers inside the battery disconnects or load breakers. So inside the wiring cabinet, there are only terminal ports without any breakers or disconnects for landing on various electrical connections. So you're welcome to bring your own external overcurrent protection and breakers, such as 100 amp fuse knife switch disconnects or 100 amp three-way transfer switches. Um, all of these are, are commonly available and not too expensive. 
for interconnecting high amperage devices in that 100 amp uh, class category for grid connections and generators, hot water tanks, uh, sub panels. And that will allow you to take advantage of the full 90 amp pass through. But it also sounds like a lot of work uh, to piece all those things together. For specifically for the AK 10K product line. So this is not necessary with the NV 12K, uh, but specifically for the NV AK and 10K product line, uh, we have an accessory panel which provides grid load generator, uh, manual bypass, and battery combining and battery disconnecting features all in one outdoor rated box intended to go next to the NV8K or 10K inverter. Um, however, the breakers are only rated for 67 amps, not 90 amps of power. Uh, that's 16 kW, not 21 kW. So when using the NV8K 10K distribution panel, you know, the backup load panel should be sized to 16 kW instead of 21 kW because the grid pass-through rating is going to be limited uh, by the interconnection gear on both the NVAK and 10K models when using this distribution panel. So to conclude the section, the NVAK and 10K models are great for backing up uh, back smaller backup panels like mini splits, refrigerators, LED lighting, the garage door, you know, as well as providing, you know, economic optimization of the electric bill uh, for customers uh, who have time of use metering or net metering or not net metering, you know, provided that they do not need UL 9540 edition two, which is only required right now in LA County, uh, but will be required over the years to come. Um, this is a, a perfect small system uh, it's perfect for small solar and small battery systems as well. Uh, for instance, one NVAK paired with the Fortress LFP10 Max, you know, or two wall-mounted E-Flex, that's the smallest possible Fortress system you can build and perfect for backing up, you know, these loads we've discussed. Um, you know, at the same time, you can build a larger system out of this and use it to back up, you know, 100 amp distribution panels, you know, with larger battery banks such as the Evolt Max. Okay, so now we get to have a little more fun talking about the NV 12K hybrid inverter. Let me take a, a minute to look for questions. I don't see any. And so uh, we'll go ahead and, and keep going here. You know, the MV12K hybrid inverter was designed for whole home backup. So this includes a 200 amp pass-through. Uh, let me see if I can pull up my drawing tool here. Let's see, pointer options, here we go. All right, so if you have a, a 200 amp electric service from the grid, what this essentially means is, you know, the when the grid is online, so when the grid is online, it can pass a full 200 amps of power to the load as long as the grid is there. Now, 200 amps times 240 volts is 48 kilowatts. And this is not a 48 kilowatt inverter. It's a 12 kilowatt inverter. But when the grid is online, you have the full grid power capability of that 200 amp service going into the home. And this makes it very easy to install a whole home backup system by placing just one inverter between the electric meter and the home service, you know, entrance, you know, between the home main service breaker panel. Um, it's important to note that the Envy does not contain a service rated disconnect. So it contains a, a breaker 
It contains a disconnect, but it's not a service rated or service entrance disconnect. And you know, some of the reasons why are, are logistically these disconnects are hard to actually fit into the wiring cabinet. Now, also, it's very common for jurisdictions just to require an external disconnect anyway. And you may want that external disconnect to not just be a disconnect, but a, a manual transfer switch uh, to cut out the system entirely when you need to service the system. So there's a variety of reasons to have uh, this, this external disconnect. And you do have a 200 amp breaker inside the wiring box to disconnect the load from the inverter as well. Um, so it's a good idea to plan on at a minimum putting a 200 amp fuse disconnect between the NV12K and the grid. Um, you may or may not also need one between the NV inverter and the main breaker panel. Um, there is a, a switch built into the wiring cabinet to disconnect that line at the cabinet itself. Okay. So it's possible to, let me try and erase this ink, but it's possible to uh, stack up to five NV inverters. So if 12KW is not enough backup power for you, you can stack up to five of them together and build you know, a 60KW backup system with the NV12K. You only need, you know, four would totally max out 200 amp service you could do five when backing up, you know, 400 amp service. The grid pass through of the inverter also increases when you install multiple inverters, but we are a little bit more conservative uh, in the additional allowance that you get. So we only allow an extra 100 amps of grid pass through per additional inverter. And, uh, you know, that's easier on the transfer switches and breakers. And it's really a better design. What it means is when you do 400 amp whole home backup service, a minimum of three NV inverters are necessary. But 400 amp home services really do need 36 kW of backup capability to begin with. And this reduces the, the failures that come with uh, more aggressive sizing. Uh, so other audience members may be thinking at this point, well, wait a minute, you know, what happens if I'm backing up a 200 amp 48 kW service uh, and then there's there's a power outage and then let's say we are on a, a single NV. So power outage. Well, now we only have 12 kW going into the home. And doesn't the electric code say something about the, the backup panel has to be sized for the backup load? And, and the answer is yes, it does. But there are many ways to get to that answer. Uh, you could monitor your on-site energy use uh, for a year and show that your load doesn't go above, you know, a 12 kilowatt or 24 kilowatt threshold. Um you know, what happens if no load management is implemented and the backup load exceeds the inverter rating, you know, for more than a few minutes, uh, the inverter will throw an error and turn off. So it really depends on the site to say, you know, what you want to do with your power when the power is out, uh, but also how are you actually going to implement that load management? There's a, a variety of strategies for that. Installers can implement uh, load control like Span or Lumen or Savant. Um, you know, if if load information is available, if you do have some some monitoring information, you may be able to shed some heavy load through use of this multi-purpose uh, generator switch. Uh, which the generator is tied into on the graphic. Uh, but you can also use this for a sub panel with some heavy loads. Like you could, it's perfect for putting your electric hot water tank onto and, and shedding that load. Or you could just put a bunch of heavy loads up to 90 amps and that panel gets cut off during the outage, allowing you to stay within 12 kW. So, 
you know, if you can manage your loads on site one way or another, a single 12 kilowatt NV hybrid inverter can be a very fast and efficient project, you know, to get the garage door, LED lights, refrigerator, you know, some air conditioning up to about a three and a half ton um, air conditioning unit. You know, if you're not sure on your loads and you think you might need more power than what your site has, leave enough physical space to install a second inverter. You know, you can always install a second inverter later uh, as long as the physical spacing is there uh, because these inverters are stackable. It, it used to be a big pain to, to redesign a system if you messed up on your load calculation. You know, it's never been easier to just come along and add in a, another inverter to the system design. So in the case of the NV, 12K inverter, it can process up to 18 kilowatts of a solar array power before clipping to the separate AC and DC sides of the inverter with a maximum of 12 kW going into either side. So in a net metered scenario, this results in more total throughput out of the system uh, because you could be selling back up to 12 kilowatts and you know every then it's almost like your your solar array is a six kilowatt solar array, and you know that requires maybe twenty four kilowatt hours of total production. Well, you can be net metering at twelve kilowatt throughout the day, and then net metering at you know the six kilowatt arrays worth of production by discharging your battery at night. Um, so if you have net metering. You know, or if you don't have net metering and, and that's even more cost and advantageous uh, for battery optimization, you know, or if you have time of use metering, you know, in, in all of these circumstances, uh, you know, essentially the, you can have the smallest um, inverter on site required to make the greatest economic impact on your, you know, electric bill by putting those batteries to daily use. So whether this daily use is a cycle a day or whether it changes down the line and electric vehicles come into play and now you're cycling your batteries, you know, more than once a day, maybe one and a half, maybe two, you know, the Fortress batteries, the Evolt Max, the E-Flex are warranted for two cycles a day, you know, up to their, you know, 10 year warranty term. So it's not a battery bank that's going to go obsolete. Um, you know, so in a net metered situation, you know, the battery bank would start at the beginning of the day low. You know, any excess solar beyond what's being sold back to the loader grid is used to charge the battery. And, you know, to prioritize, and that prioritizes economics. So in areas where, where power outages are rare, you might say the battery gets a lower priority than the grid or load. And after all of the output power is used for whatever you're trying to sell back, whatever your AC load is up to 12 kW, any addition kW is used to charge that battery full. So you can have an 18 kilowatt or even larger solar array without any clipping of that power, even though the grid output is only 12 kW. Uh, and then your battery bank's full by the end of the day. And so you can keep spinning that meter backward, you know, on into the night. So this extra power capacity is also of significant value in off-grid applications. So in off-grid, it's common to dramatically oversize the solar array in off-grid home because you want those batteries to fill up not just on sunny days, but also on partly cloudy days. So sunny days really aren't the concern of off-grid design. Normally to oversize an array, you need to buy additional you know, charge controller capacity or AC coupled solar capacity. But all of that additional DC side processing capability is already built into the Envy. So in almost all circumstances for residential arrays, you can you can put a very large residential array onto an NV12K 
Um, and then also fill up the battery before clipping occurs or an off-grid have really good uh, partly cloudy production. Um, so, you know, this, um, you know, to, to take full advantage of this, it requires a, a larger size battery bank, you know, or a good grid sellback rate for perfect efficiency or rate optimization. Um, you know, I think that, that the NV12K is really looking forward to a, a solar design where you have one NV12K on site, you know, with load control built in and, you know, up to 40 kilowatt hours of batteries to provide, you know, whole home backup uh, with load control when the power's out and then reducing with a 40 kilowatt hour battery, you know, reducing the electric bill to the barest of possible minimums, uh, regardless of what the local rate structure is, while still providing substantial power backup for power outages. So I can see installers, you know, just every day of the week, one NV on the wall, two Evo Maxes in the garage, you know, 15 kW or 20 kW of solar on the roof, you know, I'm calling it a day. So if you can put 20 kilowatts of solar on this inverter, the per watt pricing of the inverter is quite small. And when you add in the addition of the AP Smart Rapid Shutdown Only system, which is the lowest cost rapid shutdown compliance at around nine cents a watt, with the inverter costing around 38 cents a watt when fully loaded, you know, you're looking at the solar inverter plus the battery inverter and the rapid shutdown system costing less than 50 cents a watt. And that is a market leading dollar per watt inverter cost. Uh, and, you know, that extra budget you can spend on, you know, a, a high quality battery that's not going to be obsolete, you know, the minute the, the grid policy changes. So um, we're going to take a minute to discuss the MPPT of the inverter. Uh, one oddity of the NV12K MPPT is that there's there's three MPPT on the inverter and it can handle up to four solar circuits total. So only MPPT1 has the amperage to handle two solar circuits. MPPT2 and MPPT3 are undersized. They can only handle one solar circuit. Uh, what we want you to do is not do any combining up on the rooftop, but to bring all these circuits down and combine them on the wiring block uh, of both the AK-10K and the NV-12KW. Um, so the, the multiple MPPTs can mitigate shade as well as module level electronics can in most shade circumstances. Now there's always going to be that one site with a telephone pole that casts a sundial across, you know, one or two solar modules at all times of day. And for that site, yeah, use AC coupled microinverters. You know, there's really nothing else you can do. You know, but for the sites where there's a tree on the east side of the house, or you have a, a southeast and a southwest facing side, you know, utilizing the inverters multiple MPPT is, is as productive, uh, if not more productive than going with module level power electronics, each of which has its own, you know, computer and, and power tear. Uh, so if you're careful with your circuit layout on the roof and you have the large unshaded portion of the array falling onto MPPT1 and two parallel circuits. And then the section closest to the tree might go on MPPT2. And then the section on a differently oriented roof section could go on MPPT3. Then you'll have a very low cost and simple uh, job site. And solar power, you know, it's not really, 
intended for the shade anyway. So in most cases, strategic planning of the array layout as they lay onto the different MPPT circuits uh, can provide uh, the same production as DC optimization or microinverters, but with less upfront cost and you know less operating costs too, because there's less stuff up on the rooftop to go wrong. Um, so Fortress understands that most residential solar in the U.S. for the past decade has been in phase or solar edge, and the NV inverters are capable of processing the same amount of solar power, whether it's connected to the DC ports or AC coupled through the AC generator port, you know, or a combination of the two. You know, so it's very easy to retrofit large existing solar arrays into the NV, and installers can keep installing in phase or solar edge if they don't want to disrupt, you know, their additional work crew process. But it is possible to lower the dollar per watt of your project by taking advantage of the, the DC coupling and the NV MPPT. Okay, so that where can you go to get like data sheets and manuals? You know, go to the Fortress Power website under products. We have a residential product line. Go into the NV product page and scroll down. You'll get to a download section, and that's where you can find the data sheet and the inverter manual. It looks like we need to add the warranty onto there as well. But that's where the product information is stored, you know, on that product page. So here's the NV12K wiring box. You know, you can see that the DC solar inputs uh, are coming in on the bottom left. Uh, so bring each individual home run to the NV. Any paralleling of the solar circuit should occur on that PV input terminal block. With MVPT1 having two ports being rated for two solar circuits and 15 amp for MVP2 and MVP. Three. You know, just remember not to combine the solar circuits on the rooftop and you'll be okay. And Fortress has some string sizing software available uh, to help match up MBPT sizing with your exact location and your exact solar module. Uh, the inverter has disconnect switches for the battery and for the load. So the load breaker is not that service rated disconnect switch. More than likely that switch is going to be external anyway. Uh, many NV12Ks should have a fused service disconnect on the side of the inverter. You know, if installing multiple inverters, you can combine the inverters together with double lugs, you know, at the disconnect uh, in the case of two inverters. Uh, the generator also needs its own disconnect, but remember the generator is a 100 amp disconnect rather than a 200 amp disconnect. And so that's fairly affordable. And it's nice to have some quality external disconnects to the system to begin with. Um, for example, a three-way disconnect could be used in order to enable manual grid transfer, you know, placing the system into service mode. Uh, you know, and, and where, you know, maybe even if that's just with a, a small generator, you can switch off some heavy circuits and still have power to the home while the system is, is being serviced. So remember that the NV12K only has internal disconnects for the battery and for the 200 amp main service panel, not the grid, you know, not the generator and not for AC coupled solar. And also remember that the 8K and 10K don't have any breakers built into them at all, but there is that breaker accessory panel available for those smaller backup applications. Um, also, one item to note, and this is a reason to use the product page, um, but right now those knockouts on the NV inverter are an inch and a quarter knockouts along the bottom. This is going to change. We're going to put in some two-inch uh, knockouts in there. Um, but with the next product run of Envy, uh, but if you're buying Envy's, you know, in the next few, probably in the next two months, you will want to prepare for that, prepare to knock out your own conduit entry points, uh, with the hydraulic punch. And that can be useful for the flex tower as well. 
So another item to notice on the 12K is the two battery ports, uh, which both of those must be used to get the full 12 kilowatt continuous output from the inverter. Again, this has to do with wanting to put disconnects into the inverter units, but not having, you know, sizing issues for putting giant, you know, service rated disconnects. That might even be redundant anyway, because no matter what's inside the wiring box of the inverter, jurisdictions come along and want external disconnects as well. Uh, so the long story short of it is uh, we have these disconnect switches that are 200 amp switches, uh, but they they take a long time, you know, to, to trip. Um, that said, 12 kW of power is 235 amps continuous. Um, so if you intend on using the full 12 kilowatt continuous output from the battery, such as selling 12 kilowatts of power back to the grid on a daily basis, as you might want to do as part of a, a virtual power plant incentive, um, you will actually want to use both terminals and run parallel sets of conductors from you know, an E-Vault Max to the inverter, uh, rather than just one set of four out or two out cable from the E-Vault Max uh, to the inverter. It's not really a problem with the E-Flex batteries. The Duraracs uh, and Flex Towers have bus bars built in. Um, it's also not a problem with multiple batteries. For instance, if you have two E-Vault Maxes, you could quickly wire them together by landing one E-Vault Max on, you know, one terminal and the other E-Vault Max on the other terminal, eliminating the need to combine them. You know, less amperage being drawn out of each battery will still get you the full 12 kW out of it. Also not important, as important for off-grid applications where you might be going up to the maximum inverter rating for a few minutes. Uh, but aren't going to be operating at the maximum inverter range uh, continuously. Uh, so these battery ports can land on separate battery banks if the batteries are of the same capacity and age and site location. Uh, the communication system would still need to be wired together. Um, you know, two door racks containing six to eight e flexes could be wired to the inverter individually as well. So instead of combining, you know, at the door rack, you could combine at the inverter. Um, you know, the batteries still communicate as a group. They communicate to the inverter as a group. They communicate to the guardian monitoring hub as well for system level monitoring and fleet management. And there's more items to know about communication, but we're going to save that for a commissioning video. Um, the only other item to note is that the NV inverter terminal is not a ring terminal. It's a compression terminal only. But on the other side of this run, you have the, the E-Vault or the, the Durac bus bars that are ring terminals. This is actually an advantage because you can, you can feed the uncrimped end of a conductor through the wiring system and, and keep the crimped end where it's going to land. Um, that means you can do a little bit of site preparation and, and you know, bring pre-crimped battery cables, you know, to site uh, to speed up that install. And we'll look about what we can do to, to get some of those cables made, um, but that's going to be a, a longer process. Right now, you have to bring, you know, the wire run between the battery and the inverter. And uh, you could, in theory, you know, pre-crimp some six-foot long one on UL battery cable with three eighths ring terminals on one end, and then just leave the other end, you know, cut to size on site, stripped down and put into that compression terminal. You know, if you're using flexible cable, put a ferrule on it, and then you'll be all right. 
Um, and and one item is well, hold on. The E Vault Max, uh, it only has one terminal, not two. So the E Flex is you can put on a bus bar and get your terminals in the bus bar. The E Flex in the Dura Rack includes a bus bar that has multiple terminals for an inverter. You know, but the E Vault only has one set of terminals. So if you're doing a single E Vault. Here is a double lug terminal you can land on the stud of the E-Vault. But if you do so, you have to make sure to keep that cabinet locked uh, with the key not, you know, right next to the cabinet. It has to be a, a secured site if you're going to uh, add a, a lug like this onto the stud of the E-Vault. That is contained in its own locked cabinet, but, you know, even so. So, you know, uh, the long story short of it is the NV is a 12 kilowatt inverter. You know, the California Energy Commission actually rates it as an 11.94 kilowatt inverter. Um, you know, at 11.94 at kW at 51.2 nominal volts, you know, that's a 235 amp continuous output rating. So let's say you are in the strictest of strict electrical jurisdictions and you know you're getting inspected for the cable run between the inverter and the battery bank that's not necessarily going to be all the cases you know it's very common in the battery industry to say oh use two watt cable you know if the battery in inverter is within 10 feet and four watt cable at, at greater than 10 feet and that's manufacturer instruction and uh if you're in the strictest of jurisdictions, though, and you want and you're only using, say, table 31016 and doing your temperature allowance and noting that some battery conductors, you have more than two inside a, a, a particular conduit. Uh, at, at that point, the uh, amperage rating for two watt or four watt uh, is not something the inspector is going to sign off on, despite what the manufacturing instructions say. And so it's really easy to do, you know, a code compliant in all cases, uh, one on parallel UL battery cable run, you know, between the batteries and the inverter. So what that would mean is to kind of prepare for your site. You now, if you had two sets of six foot long one on UL battery cable with a three eighths ring terminal pre crimped. And you had you know two sets of black, two sets of red, um, and then oversized ferrules so that they can fit over the fine stranded one knot. So uh, ferrules are little protective metal cylinders that get crimped uh, across the end of the wire before they land on the terminal. Uh, and then you get this particular part for the E Vault Max. So the Evolt Max with this part, you can dispense with the ring terminals altogether. You'll have compression fits on both ends of the run, you know, or you might be landing on a bus bar, you know, inside the trough. So there's a lot of different ways to plan the wiring. I wanted to share this information to, to stimulate some ideas for, for site prep. Um, but just keep in mind that, you know, the site, if it only is going to hit 12 kW, for short durations of time common to off-grid, a single set of conductors, you know, two watt conductors within 10 feet of the equipment is still acceptable and in accordance to manufacturer instructions. Um, all right, so for, and for instances of three or more batteries, you know, it's necessary to use external bus bars anyway to combine multiple batteries and multiple NVs inverters together anyway. So at that point, you have landing ports, you know, for your, your ring terminal, you know, pre-made conductors to, to land on. Uh, finally, as a reminder, the, the DC bus bars are included with the Durarack and Flex Tower battery cabinets. So if you buy, a, uh, as well as the battery wires between the batteries and the bus bars. So if you buy a, a NV inverter and you buy a, a, a Fortress Flex Tower, uh, the only real special part you'll need to bring with you are these battery cables in front of you. Uh, to, to finish out that specialty kind of balance of system equipment. 
So the inverters include CT rings to put around the main service panel uh, for service panel monitoring and to enable different modes of operation like zero export when users don't want to or are allowed to sell power back to the grid. So installers will appreciate that there is a reversed CT option that you can trigger on the screen or remotely. Uh, so if your installers uh, accidentally install the CT arrows in the wrong orientation, you don't need to have a costly trip to site. You can just log in the monitoring and reverse the direction. Uh, at this time, the NV inverters only support a single pair of CTs in the monitoring interface, even when running multiple inverters. Uh, but keep in mind that the generator port is also used to monitor, you know, whatever's connected to that generator port. So AC coupled solar, smart loads, or the generator itself. So there is a little bit more monitoring than just these CTs going on in the platform. You know, today's market to, to implement even more advanced holistic monitoring, you know, that's what the smart load control panels are for, you know, span, lumen, savant today. Uh, and those will still have their uses when Fortress launches its own, you know, smart microgrid device, the Allure, later on in the year. So the NV inverter has a nice, fully programmable LCD screen that, you know, on the home screen, it shows the energy flow diagram of the system, and it makes it very obvious to determine, you know, what's going on on site, you know, even without the internet, um, you know, or, or data connection. Um, it's the, the LCD screen is large. And so I found with other inverter touch screens that sometimes I have to use my pinky to kind of precisely press the right point, point on the screen for what needs to be programmed. Well, you know, the NV screen uh, is easier to interact with being slightly larger. So let's talk about the NV and the Evolt Max pairing. The NV can pair with a single Evolt Max and communicate even without the Guardian monitoring hub. So the Evolt Max uh, with the latest firmware can discharge when communicating with an NV at a 12 kilowatt continuous rate, unless the battery is near empty. So the, the charge rate was left at nine kilowatts or the C over two rate, because that's what's best for battery life. Um, you know, it, uh, if, if you can, don't sell back to the grid from the battery at the full rated power of 12 kW. If you can, you know, sell back to the grid at the C over two rate of nine kW instead of the slightly faster rate of 12 kW uh, for the best battery life. But some customers, uh, particularly those with virtual power plant incentives, will want to sell back to the grid at a faster rate because the program is giving them additional money. And you're allowed to do that with the Evolt Max and NV using the full 12 kW rated power. So likewise, during a power outage, the full 12 kW uh, from the Evolt is made available and uh, since we're discussing the Evolt Max, remember that Fortress allows its certified installers to remove the cell packs from the Evolt Max during installation. That has some logistics benefits, such as making it easier to hike the Evolt Max up and down the stairs on site. You know, the Evolt Max disassembles and reassembles very quickly in about the same amount of time as what it takes to assemble a stackable battery system. Uh, which stackable batteries, when you throw in more complicated commissioning procedures and a uh, higher BMS power draw by the nature of being, you know, individual battery units, uh, the Evolt Max still has, you know, very good advantage. Um, so just remember that, you know, while some projects are as easy as uncreating the Evolt Max in a garage and wheeling it into place with one conductor run between the batteries and the inverters. Um, it's still fairly easy to take the Evolt Max apart 
and put it back together again. And when you look at stackable batteries, you still have all these, you know, side panels that you have to screw together, you know, after you stack the batteries, you, you have a lot of mounting brackets to install. You know, so the Evolt Max is still a very easy and, and fast uh, installation uh, solution. And even with the, the Envy dual ports, you know, that makes it easy to either A, add a second Evolt Max without any additional combining uh, to get, you know, a 20 kilowatt, 37 kilowatt hour solar battery project on a single hybrid 12 kW inverter uh, and implement that with load control. And you have a very compelling value, you know, to what solar array owners want in a project today. And, you know, that also gives the installer a project that's on and off the job site very quickly. Uh, the the eFlex product line also has some very robust design options for the NV inverter, including a NEMA 3R outdoor rated cabinet that was used in our UL 9540A large scale fire tests uh, for the eFlex product line. So the Evolt Max is UL 9540A. You know, so is this eFlex product line when used in conjunction with, at minimum, the, the lower battery cabinet, the Durarack. So when purchased separately, that lower battery cabinet is called the Durarack, uh, which includes the bus bar and the battery to bus bar cables, uh, as well as terminal ports uh, to parallel to adjacent Duraracks, as well as to wire up to the NV inverter inside the flex tower. You know, the flex tower comprises of the two cabinets. When you buy a flex tower, you get the upper inverter cabinet as well as the lower battery cabinet that can hold up to four E-Flex batteries. So while the NV is outdoor rated, uh, placing it inside of a cabinet will provide it with substantially greater protection against dust and rain, snow, also prying eyes. I mean, we're big enough to where we've gotten reports of, you know, batteries and inverters being installed as the first thing on a construction site for residential new build and to only have those products stolen off of the job site. You know, the, the, the cabinet takes a little bit more time to install than just doing a, a traditional wall mount but it's very secure. It's very hard to figure out uh, how to remove the equipment. It's not impossible to, but it's very hard to figure out because you have to do it in a in a precise order. And without getting further into it, you know that added security uh, is useful not just in outdoor setting but indoors as well. Uh, so cabinet options will always be more complicated, but the flex tower adds electrical and mechanical security to the system. High-end residential customers, they don't want to see a mess of conduit and cable on the side of their house or inside their garage. They just want a solution that's tucked away with a more uniform look. You know, they don't want to worry about kids poking their fingers into the system, you know, kids young and old. So, uh, you know, the, the cabinets include multiple dead fronts so that you don't just open up the cabinet and stick your hand in. You know, just remember three flex towers can be used for 400 amp service or three phase service. Uh, additional Durax can be added, you know, for up to 162 kilowatt hours of E-Flex storage capacity. You know, that will require the use of external uh, combiners. Uh, but it is possible to have a complete cabinetized solution, you know, on a site that accommodates very large battery banks, you know, with this product line. So, yeah, the, the Flex Tower, it will have a learning curve to it, but it eliminates the electrical trough, the external conduit. Uh, when you consider the labor savings of eliminating those items, you know, yeah, it could be well worth the effort. So, uh, it's also a very easy system to add an AC DIN rail heater to. Uh, you can run a small wire up to the inverter, 
you know, tap onto the AC port and and run, you know, a DIN rail AC heater. And that's the easiest way to build a heated battery box for environments both indoor and outdoor, which get below 40 degrees in the winter, which includes most outdoor environments throughout the United States, as well as many garages in cold weather climates. So at the end of the day, the operating temperature, you know, uh, the, the BMS system will protect the battery against operating below freezing, you know, but the, the, whether or not that temperature of freezing versus 35 degrees instead of 30 degrees, you know, it's not a sharp cliff. It's more of a, a spectrum. And so the combination of the Envy and the Flex Tower uh, makes it very easy to put a heater into the cabinet uh, within just the battery box and tie it into the AC side so that you can still turn the heater off when the battery bank hits its low battery cutoff voltage, uh, rather than putting the heater onto the DC side where A, it's harder to find the components needed to do that, uh, but B, putting the heater on the DC side can tr drain the battery you know, further once it's below its inverter low battery cutoff point. Uh, Stego makes a very good DIN rail mounted AC thermostat all-in-one heating element. And we have that linked in the in our online knowledge base. You know, go to the Fortress website, go to the support page, go to the knowledge base, click around the eFlex area, and you'll see our recommended heater accessories. Okay, so now we're getting into very advanced topics. So what about the 400 amp pass-through configuration setup? So this requires at minimum three NV inverters, although four or five uh, can be a good idea depending on you know how large the home is. Uh, anything larger than that, you're probably getting into the, the small end of our commercial and industrial product range. <laughs> you know, regardless, the, the 400 amp pass-through requires at least three NV12K. That'll provide 36 kW of backup or greater. That's appropriate for 400 amp service. You know, yeah, you don't you don't need to combine everything together. You could put one NV12K on one 200 amp panel and another NV12K on another 200 amp panel, but it really is much better just to combine the inverter outputs together to get 60 kW of backup power. So the more inverters added, the larger the minimum battery bank size becomes and jurisdictions enforcing NFPA 855 can force residential battery systems over 40 kilowatt hours to be installed outside the home, which is a little ridiculous, but that's a different conversation for a different day. You know, regardless, the Flex Tower system offers a path forward for easy outdoor installations without going over the NFPA 855 80 kilowatt hour limit for outdoor installations, which would just trigger yet another NFPA 855 provision requiring fire extinguishment systems, uh, such as those found in fortresses, commercial or industrial uh, battery packs. So just keep in mind that you may have to separate the battery banks into different locations, such as a flex tower inside the garage, and then another one outside the garage, along with maybe two other Dura racks to get a total of 16 E flex and you know 86 kilowatt hours of battery backup, and still maintain the NFPA 855 residential compliance. So it is a it maintains true to its roots of being a flexible uh, system with the flex tower. So optimizing design is really a whole nother webinar. So what we wanna remember here is that the 400 amp pass-through requires combining the grid side of the systems together, as well as the load SID or the side or the backup side of the system together. And there's a small amount of inelegance when doing this with, um, you know, hybrid inverters instead of like, you know, a, a smart switch or gateway that, 
you know, an external ATS, but ultimately it's very hard to do 400 amp automatic grid transfer using those 200 amp gateways or 200 amp smart panels if they're even able to do it. So the NV is going to remain a great solution for backing up 400 amp service well into the future, you know, well into the time when we see more high voltage batteries coming to market. So uh, you don't necessarily, you know, need 400 amp distribution panels when combining the grid and load sides together, you know, fused power distribution blocks inside of junction boxes would also be a valid choice. So leading to like a, a single service entrance or disconnect or manual transfer switch, you know, what have you, similar to what we've talked about previously, you know, here we have 400 amp service uh, going into the grid side combined together, the load side are combined together again with, you know, what I would do is fused uh, power distribution blocks before going to the home 400 amp panel or double 200 amp panel. Word on the street is that main lug only 400 amp all in one panels are actually no more expensive than two 200 amp panels. So, you know, coming out of the, the backup side or the, the load side, you could put a, a fused 400 amp disconnect and a 400 amp panel and run your whole house off that 400 amp service. All right, so let's take a peek inside NV monitoring. Uh, getting the NV internet access set up requires the use of the NV app that's available on the Apple Store and the Google Play Store. Uh, the inverters connect to the home internet via Wi Fi or hot hardwire. Uh, the data of the monitoring can only be accessed online or through direct connection to the inverter Wi-Fi using the app. So when there is a power outage and the internet is offline, you can connect to the inverters for local monitoring. Uh, this monitoring portal and app is not actually the guardian monitoring hub that Fortress has already for battery monitoring. For the time being, Fortress users will need both the NV and the guardian apps although we'll try to combine them together uh, at some point in the future. Uh, the Guardian Hub is still used for battery level monitoring, firmware updates for the batteries, support requests, and the NV app really provides more detailed uh, system level analytics and is also used for adjusting the inverter settings you know, as needed. So it's it's live now. We're giving screenshots. We may get into it towards the end, but here's, you know, when you log in, you get an energy flow diagram that's useful for understanding how, you know, the NV system is working. Um, many battery settings are already programmed uh, when the Fortress battery communication is enabled. Uh, custom grid settings can be inputted. Uh, our Puerto Rico audience will love this feature. Uh, there's a specific grid profile for Luma built into the NV. Um, and there's also, it's, it's, it's very easy to export the, the grid settings to a PDF. Um, this can be done on-site remotely and also can be done remotely through the monitoring system. So inspectors nowadays, they'll often ask for a grid settings report to confirm that the, the inverter is programmed to regional grid settings, you can export this report directly in the app. So one uh, interesting inverter setting uh, is that there are separately programmable depths of discharge for grid tie and off-grid end-of-day end of day mode of operation. So uh, participants in grid tie battery incentives can cycle their batteries fully from 100 percent, you know, down to zero percent. Remember, when they're grid tied, you know, the inverter can maintain the battery at the bottom of its charge to prevent the battery from, you know, being discharged to the point where it turns off. 
So various battery incentives, virtual power plants may incentivize fully cycling the battery, but you wouldn't want to do that when there's a power outage. Uh, you'd want to leave enough reserve capacity in the tank to keep the batteries, you know, uh, to remain sure that they're powered on until the sun comes back out. So I haven't seen this feature of different depths of discharge for on-grid and off-grid uh, and other inverters. I think it's very forward thinking. Uh, the NV inverter can also be placed into voltage mode, such as when using lead acid batteries uh, that will disable the battery communication when troubleshooting. Uh, the NV inverter also has very good uh, system details, you know, very detailed energy, historic data, you know, event data. Uh, installers will love the, the fleet management aspects to the NV monitoring system. It's possible to adjust settings across multiple systems, not just one. So you, if there's a system-wide update, you do not need to uh, log in to every single system to adjust a setting. Um, you know, that will allow field installers to be focused on getting the system operational on site. And then a programmer can follow behind them and remotely commission the systems to ensure all the settings are correct, uh, such as reversing those CT sensors if needed uh, and ensuring the grid standards are appropriately implemented. Uh, likewise, with time of day programming, uh, you know, the firmware, the inverter firmware can also be updated remotely. So basically, the system settings can be adjusted, you know, remotely. Right. One uh, resource uh, that is about to be on our Fortress website, we have this as an Excel sheet in our dealer resources, but it'll be um, soon, you know, probably after this webinar, uh, linked onto the Fortress website is a string sizing tool. So you can, you know, select the NV inverter. Uh, we're about to add a whole lot more solar panels to this tool, um, but you can select your battery, you know, put in a, a little bit of site information. I'm just kind of doing this, um, you know, shooting from the hip here. Um, You know, put in your rooftop temperature, you know, put in your, your record low and click calculate and it'll get a little bit of validation tool. So it says, uh, you know, hey, this is an outdoor installation, you know, you need a heated battery. Uh, so we'll change that to indoor, clear the error. Um, over 5,000 feet, you know, higher elevations, You there's a note to kind of oversize the inverter, just a reminder for that, um, you know, and, uh, you know, here we see now that the design is validated and we can see we can put two circuits of up to 22 panels on MPPT1 and then, you know, one circuit of 11 on MPPT2, one circuit of 11 on MPPT3 um, with a minimum of five panels per circuit, a maximum of 11 panels per circuit and there's no MPPT4 on this particular model. So we do have some string sizing tools available. Uh, just to kind of close out before we go into to Q and A, let's talk about a couple topics. AC coupling. Um, the system works with AC coupling. Uh, this this generator port is 90 amps and that can be used for the generator um it can also be used for ac coupling so 90 amps times you know 240 volts is 21.6 kw of inverter capacity so traditionally, AC coupling is not done on the generator port. Traditionally, AC coupling is done on the load port. But when it's done on the load port, it gets mixed in with, you know, the, the solar energy and the main breaker energy, 
becomes hard to know what you're actually producing through your AC coupled device. You know, also this backup side is only 12 kW. You know, the generator port is much larger at you know 21 kW. So you can AC couple larger than 12 kW systems onto the NV inverter, provided that your battery bank is sized appropriately. You know that can be properly managed without any clipping. Um, so AC coupling is fine as a retrofit, but it's less elegant than a DC coupled solution. Um, for one, you do need a large battery bank to AC couple very large solar arrays, the NV inverter, and not clip. You know, in 40 kilowatt hours, not 11 kilowatt hours. Um, you know, there, there are some designs you can do with transfer switches, et cetera, to, to resolve your specific AC coupled issue. Um, it also becomes complicated when you, you know, want to incorporate this with a generator. So it's very the, the AC coupled systems want to export all the power that they have into the, you know, into the electric grid. They're not, we don't have AC coupled solar when the electric grid fails because AC, you know, solar inverters want to dump all their power somewhere. You know, their, their loads are not like how a battery inverter process power, their loads need to go somewhere. So the, the problem is when you add a generator to an AC coupled system simultaneously, it, it then becomes very difficult to control that the generator is not going to get backfed with, you know, a, a simultaneous AC coupled tie-in. And, uh, you know, the when, when AC coupling with the generator it's also not currently feasible to implement the auto start generator controls, you know, because of that, you know, essentially you have to isolate so that only the generator or the AC coupled solar array can run at the same time. So we're looking at solutions for this through updated firmware inverters down the road. Uh, but it's just worth noting that when you do AC coupling with a generator, uh, there are different design approaches for grid tied and off grid uh, scenarios. So we're going to get into a little bit more about that when we talk about the generator port. Uh, but the rule of thumb is don't put yourself in a situation where the generator and the solar array run at the same time. And typically what that means is that you're going to have to put a manual transfer switch between the generator and the AC coupled solar array. And that's only going to be a hundred amp manual transfer switch. You know, it's, it's normally the AC coupled solar array is there, but when you need to run the generator, it's going to be a manual start. And you're going to have to go over and throw the switch and crank the generator. Um, you know, so what that means is with AC coupling, it's a great retrofit solution, but if you're looking at new construction projects, it might be time to switch away from micro inverters and move towards, you know, either a DC optimizer solution like Tygo or Intelligent, you know, or a rapid shutdown only solution like AP systems or NEP and take advantage of the inverter MPPT. So last but not least, uh, the AC coupled uh, controls require a little bit of headroom in the battery before the battery can be charged. So again, that energy has to have somewhere to go. When the grid is online, that energy goes off to the grid. When the grid is offline, the batteries need to make sure that they have some headroom to get that power in. So in an AC coupled system, users will see their batteries charge all the way up to 100%, but then the batteries will drop down to about 
before charging back up again with an AC coupled solar. So it's it's generally a bad idea to keep a battery at 100% full 365 days a year just in case the power goes out. Now, lithium batteries are, are rated for daily use, and there is an element of use it or lose it uh, to be had here. Um, but just know with AC coupling, you may have some alarmed customers because their battery, you know, when the sun's out, if they're off grid, their battery will not stay at 100% full. It'll go up to 100, go down to 80, go up to 100, go down to 80. So let's let's talk about this generator port and then kind of round out the program. So it would be appropriate to call the generator port like a auxiliary port because it's a it has a Swiss army knife of functionality. The port can be used for a generator. It can also be used for AC coupling. It can also be used for smart load management. So we're not using the generator port for AC coupling or a generator. It's a wonderful place just to land an electric tank water heater onto, which can effectively turn a hot water tank into a battery. You know, that might get you to your load control for keeping your home under 12 kW during a power outage without any sacrifice necessary depending on your load. So likewise, it could be used for load shedding to get rid of loads that don't need to be backed up during an outage. Um, so there's a lot of flexibility that you can use with it. It's rated for 90 amps continuous. It's actually rated, it can go up to a maximum of 100 amps, but we're giving it a 90 amp continuous rating, um, which is a little bit more than 21 kW of nameplate power um, and the reason for that is that solar inverters tend to operate at their maximum ampacity. So we're buying ourselves a little bit of headroom with that 90 amp rating. You know, likewise, generator power tends to surge. And so if you try and, and program 100 amps out of it, uh, you know, you could exceed the maximum rating of the port. Uh, so more, no more than 90 amps of nameplate solar capacity can be AC coupled to the NV uh, with a maximum solar array size of 21 kW. And you're allowed to connect a 22 kilowatt or 24 kilowatt generator to the AC port, but you the, the inverter settings will throttle it down to only 21 kW of supply. Uh, generators larger than 24 kW should not be connected to the NV port unless you're installing multiple inverters and combining the generator ports together. So it's a little confusing to realize there are two options when tying a generator into the inverter. The generator port works great for generators with two wire auto start capability. However, the, the generator port itself is not capable of black starting the battery. Uh, black starting is, you know, imagine there's no other power sources going into the inverter. Will the thing turn the inverter on? And a generator tied into the generator port of the NV will not turn the NV on by itself. Um, you know, that, that sounds weird, but if you use the stationary generator with a two-wire auto start capability, you won't get to that point. The, the batteries will hit their low battery cutoff. The generator will turn on and charge the batteries up. Um, proper inverter settings and planning are the way to avoid having to black start an inverter with a generator. But there are some techniques to know about that can resolve this issue if you should find yourself in it. Um, if you DC couple the solar array to the NV, the NV can turn on just with solar without a battery and run a small load. So it can run a 120 volt AC trickle charger you know, if you if you had deep discharge batteries and just solar in the NV and a trickle charger, you could trickle charge the batteries back up to the point where you know that side of the, the inverter would energize. In a way, you go. Um, 
But the the easier way to resolve all this is to tie the generator not into the generator port, use that generator port for something else, load control, um, you know, AC coupling, whatever, but to tie the generator into the grid side of the inverter. And the, the grid, by nature, it can turn on the inverter. So if you have grid power, the, the grid turns on. The generator, likewise, can turn on the inverter through the grid side. Um, however, <laughs> the NV is not quite refined enough to be able to auto start the generator when it's tied into the grid side of the inverter and, and moreover, turn off any AC coupled solar. So right now we know we can fix this configuration issue through future software updates, but, but, but right now when you put the generator onto the grid side, it's a manual start. So the short of it is that in a DC coupled off-grid scenario with a manual start generator, the generator should be connected to the grid side of the inverter, not the load side. But an auto start generator should be connected to the generator port. You know, if you wanted to automate things. So when combining generators and AC coupling, you can't have it all. You know, some sacrifice is going to have to be made, whether that's a, a transfer switch between the generator to the gen side to the load side, you know, or a transfer switch between the generator and the AC coupled solar array, or, or both, or giving up the auto start capability of the generator and, and accepting, you know, one transfer switch, you know, they, you just can't have it all. So, you know, there are design complications with any system where you have AC coupled solar and generators, but uh, it's it's best to go with DC coupling if you can. So that's a little confusing, but it's not unique to the NV inverter. It's just difficult to do AC coupled solar and a generator simultaneously while warranting that nothing will ever go wrong with you know back feeding the generator. All right, so we're almost done. So the last but not least, before we go to Q&A, you know, can a wind turbine be added to the NV? And the, the, the short answer is yes, but the long answer is, is actually quite long. Um, wind systems are less controlled than solar systems. They should only be installed by a professional who understands the impact of the wind turbine design on the system uh, and the design and its limitations uh, thoroughly. It is not something that should be done if it's your very first wind project without a professional uh, by your side helping you through that project. Um, the, the wind turbine with the NV inverter uh, it's best to use an AC inverter output using the generator port for the tie-in, taking advantage of the, the generator smart port functionality for AC coupling to make sure that the wind charge is turned off before the batteries get completely full and not turned on just like regular AC coupling until the batteries have some headroom to accept the charge. So in other words, a, a wind turbine with an AC, you, you know, tied into the AC side rather than the DC side, you know, functions the same way, way as an AC coupled uh, solar inverter. Okay, so we made it through uh, that, that mighty presentation. Um, I'm going to check the Q&A and pull up these, these NV specs. Let me pull up the spec for the 12K and then I'll go into, you know, some Q&A. Uh, so let's see what we have. We have, can you explain the generator pass-through capability and how that works if the inverter fails? So the, the generator pass-through is really more of a feature for when the, the grid is online rather than when the grid is offline. So, you know, what it is is, well, if I have a 12 kilowatt backup generator and my home is, you know, that's only 50 amps. And my service panel is 200 amps. So how do I back up a home 
without four envies? How do I back up a home without spending, you know, $150,000 plus projects? Well, the answer is, well, how does Tesla do it? How does Enphase do it? How does Solar do it? One way or another, there's a transfer switch that allows the home access to the full 200 amps of grid power supply when the grid is on, and then it can disconnect from the grid and power with the 12 kW of power supply when the grid is off. And so that transfer switch on Enphase and Tesla systems is external to the product. On the NV, just like the Solark 15K, that transfer switch is built into the product. So there's no external microgrid disconnect device. That microgrid interconnect device is built into the inverter. Now, when you, that moment is triggered, the other problem is, well, how do I run the home load off 12 kW of power if they need 50 kW of power? Well, first off, 200 amp homes almost never need 200 amp worth of power. If they did, we would see main breakers tripping all the time. Okay, well, EV chargers are coming and that's going to boost amperage. Well, I thought actually EV chargers were supposed to help the grid, not hurt the grid. But, you know, it, it depends on your EV control system, whether it helps or hurts. Same with all of your other loads on site. If you're in a gas home and you have gas, you know, heat and you have gas stoves and you have gas hot water, you know, 12 kW may be all you need. And, you know, if you have monitoring information, you can show that to an inspector and say, look, my home never goes above 12 kW. And furthermore, if it did go above 12, 12 kW, I just moved my heaviest load. You know, I guess I can't use my air conditioning. I'll move it, you know, to the smart load control. And when the batteries are full and the sun's up, you know, I'll have my air conditioning connected. But, you know, when the sun goes down and, and my batteries are empty and I'm, you know, I'll disconnect it. You know, so there's, there's, it, it depends on your load. You know, it, is doing two NV inverters for 12, 24 kW backup power better than 12? You know, yeah, it's more power. So, you know, it really depends on the site. But the short of it is installers and customers want things that are simple and they want things that they can understand. And they can understand the grid coming into the inverter and the grid coming out of the inverter into the load. And when the grid's online, they have. 200 amps worth of capability through a grid pass through. And when the grid's offline, they no longer have the grid pass through. They no longer pass go. They no longer collect $200. All they have is the 12 kW backup. You know, if they call you and they say, well, 12 kW wasn't enough, you, you sell them another inverter, put in some power distribution blocks with fuses you know, double lug onto the 200 amp external disconnect using double lug ports, you know, move on with your life. Um, so for off-grid systems, the 200 amp pass-through essentially allows you to have a larger generator. So if you had a, a you know, 30 kilowatt generator, 40, 50 kilowatt generator, you could pass through more power. And there's there's other kinds of like cascading system architectures where you could have a battery inverter <laughs> on one end of the system and a battery inverter on another end of the system. And, and it's, it's funky architecture. Generally, if you get into those off the beaten path architectures to exploit you know additional power capability of the system, you've already done something wrong with your design and you're trying to to fix a, a design woe rather than doing it right. Almost always, if you want to build large systems, it'll just combine everything together. And, and you know, if you're not using uh, panels and panel boards to combine everything together, you know, using some type of uh, uh, power distribution system, such as, you know, power distribution blocks, uh, depending on how many you're combining, um, putting in fused power, you know, uh, fuse inline fuses before you get or on terminal fuses, whatever, 
you know, before you get to your power distribution block or when you get to your power distribution block, uh, that would be the good solution. Okay, well, any more questions? Uh, we have a pretty good audience number, so thank you for sticking with me. I know it was, uh, you know, a, a long one, but there's a lot of information there. You know, we're making this for our, our training portal so that installers can prepare for site. And, um, you know, otherwise, uh, thank you for attending. And, you know, when tomorrow rolls around, you have a great weekend.